It was a sultry summer evening in the small town of Yabiyan. Two young siblings, Emeka and Oyinye, were playing by the river bank. Emeka, the elder by three years, was a sturdy boy of ten, while Oyinye, delicate and spirited, has just turned seven. Their laughter echoes through the air, mingling with the chirping of crickets and the distant croak of frogs. Unbeknownst to them, a fierce storm was brewing within their household. Their parents, Asonye and Maria B, had been arguing for weeks, their voices growing louder and more desperate with each passing day. The cause of their discord was an insurmountable debt that threatened to strip them of their home and livelihood. On that fateful evening, as the storm clouds gathered overhead, the final argument erupted as Sonye, in a fit of desperation, decided he had to leave in search of work, hoping to salvage what was left of their lives. He packed his bags and, with tears in his eyes, kissed his children goodbye. Maria, broken by the weight of their circumstances, fell to her knees, clutching on Yer's favorite doll, her face a mask of despair. Maria had to stay and raise the children, but her son had left home to never return. She cried every day, hoping her husband would come home. She prayed every day, hoping she would find a job soon and end the money they so desperately needed. One night, as they slept, there was a fire outbreak in their home. The block burned down as people ran helter-skelter trying to save their lives and salvage whatever little thing they could carry. In the confusion, Emeka and Oyinye were separated, each pulled in different directions by frantic neighbors trying to save them. By the time the fire was extinguished, Maria was found where she lay unconscious from the smoke, and Emeka and Oyinye were nowhere to be found. Years passed. An Emeka, who was placed in an orphanage, was adopted by a wealthy family from the city. The Johnsons had just lost their son, who bore much resemblance to Emeka. Although sad and deeply grieved, they found solace in the resilient, bright-eyed boy and brought him into their home and raised him as their own. Emeka grew into a formidable young man, excelling in academics and business alike. The Johnsons owned a vast empire and Emeka, driven by an unyielding ambition and a deep-seated need to prove himself, did everything in his power to live up to the challenge. By the time he was 30, Emeka Johnson was in name synonymous with power and success. He had expanded the family's business into new territories, ventured into technology and real estate, and became a prominent figure in high society. But amidst the glittering parties and the boardroom compass, a hollow ache gnawed at him. The fragmented memories of his childhood, the flashes of a little girl's laughter, and a burning home haunted his dreams. He woke up sweating at night whenever he had the dream about the burning house. The tears of the little girl as she looked at him pleading with fear in her eyes as someone took her in the chaos, nod at him. It was always the same scene he saw every time. Determined to find closure, Emeka hired the best investigators money could buy to search for his lost sister. He poured over old records, retracted his steps to Abiyama, and left no stone unturned. Yet, despite his vast resources, Oyinye remained elusive. No one could tell him anything no clue was found. On the other hand, Oyinye had led a life starkly different from her brothers. After the fire, she was found wandering the streets, clutching her child doll. A kind but poor couple adopted her. Although they struggled to make ends meet, they provided her with love and a roof over her head. But the scars of that night never truly healed. Oyinye grew up with fierce independence, Working odd jobs to support herself and her adoptive parents, she also had the dream, the dream of a house burning down and someone pulling her away from her older brother. By the time she was in her 20s, she had moved to the city, taking on a series of low-paying jobs. Eventually, she found work as a secretary in one of Emeka Johnson's many companies, a sprawling conglomerate. When you worked diligently, her efficiency and dedication unnoticed 
by most, but appreciated by her immediate superiors. One day, a major project required the attention of Emeka himself. His presence in the office was a rare occurrence, and the air buzzed with anticipation and anxiety. Ladies readied themselves, hoping he would glance their way, or better still, warn them. When he had no time for such luxuries, she was tasked with preparing the necessary documents and ensuring everything was in order. As she meticulously arranged the files, her mind drifted to the recurring dreams she heard. Onye, she could still hear him call out to her. Her brother, who had promised to protect her, had been missing and she had no clue as to what happened to him. It also pained her even more that she had no means to look for him. If only I had the resources to deploy. I would not hesitate, she said to herself. The air in the office never let up when he hurried to meet up with the task. Emeka walked into the office, his imposing figure commanding attention. He moved with the confidence of a man who had conquered the world. Yet his eyes betrayed a willingness that only those who had seen the dark side of success could understand. He glanced at Onye briefly. Something about her felt familiar, but he dismissed it. I rarely come here, he thought. How can I possibly know her? As the meeting commenced, Onye's professionalism shone through. Emeka, impressed by her efficiency, asked her to stay behind after the meeting. He needed someone he could trust to handle the sensitive details of the project, and Onye Zimino had piqued his interest. Over the next few weeks, Emeka and Onye worked closely together despite the difference in their statuses. There was a natural camaraderie between them. They laughed together and unlike Emeka, he asked her opinion on things and worried about little things that concerned her. Over time, Emeka found himself opening up to her in ways he hadn't with anyone else. He shared stories of his childhood, the fire, and his lost sister, and his futile effort to find her, not realizing that the very person he was confiding in was the one he had been searching for. Onye listened intently, her heart aching as she pieced together the fragments of her own past. The details Emeka provided matched her memories, the fire, the separation, the brother who had vanished from her life, but she couldn't bring herself to believe it fully, not until she had proof. She would have to test him. The only thing she had left home with on the night of the fire was her charred door. Her brother always teased her about the door. She would place it where Emeka would see it, and if he recognized it, then he was really her lost brother. So Onye began carrying her charred door to work every day seeking an opportunity to test her boss. One evening, as they walked late into the night, Onye left her door casually on the floor. As Emeka walked by and saw the door, he stopped on his path, picked up the door and dusted it. He then took it into his office and placed it delicately on his desk. Why is life trying me so hard? He asked into the air. Onye walked in as her boss paced in his office talking to himself. Is everything all right? She asked. Emeka stopped, took a photo from his wallet and handed it to me. This is me and my sister when we were little. That is the only thing I got after the fire. The photo was a faded image of a young boy and a girl by the river bank. Their faces lit up with innocent joy. Winye's breath caught in her throat as she recognized herself in the picture, her brothers and protectively around her. That's all I have, and now I find this, he said, pointing to the door, carefully placed on his desk. I wonder who this belongs to. You must find out first thing tomorrow. Tears welled up in Oinye's eyes. There's no need to wait till tomorrow. I know the owner, she said. Who? Cool. Emeka asked with excitement and impatience. Me? It is my door, and I carry it around when I'm afraid. I just want to feel my family around me. When you told me your story, it reminded me of my similar past. So I carry my doll when I miss my family the most. Emeka hugged Onye tightly. You should have said something about your pain. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm here now. They spent the night reminiscing, filling the gaps in each other's stories, their connection growing deeper with every word. 
So this is why I felt so free with you, Emeka said. I never lose up so easily with anyone. Even my adopted mother worries I may never marry. What can I say? I exude the right magic on yet sees. Emeka, overwhelmed by the discovery, vowed to make up for the lost time. He offered a new position that reflected her true capabilities, ensuring she was no longer a faceless employee, but an integral part of his life and business. Onye in turn brought a sense of balance to Emeka's world, reminding him of the importance of family and grounding him in ways his success never could. The Johnsons accepted Onye wholeheartedly on learning that she was Emeka's long-lost sister. Together, they visited their hometown, Abiyama. Emeka used his wealth and influence to rebuild their childhood home, turning it into a heaven for children who have suffered similar fates. Oinye took charge of the project, her compassionate nature shining through as she dedicated herself to helping others. As they stood by the riverbank, watching the sun set once more, they knew that the past was behind them and the future, bright and unchartered, lay ahead.